Okay, this is probably one of the bits of A-level maths that people find the hardest, and it's proof using trig identities. Now, the reason people find this so hard is because it always feels like there's a different way that people might answer this question. But once you get good at this topic, this is kind of the beauty of it. There are so many different ways of being able to prove these trigonometric identities. So what we're being asked to do here is we're being asked to prove that 1 minus tan theta sine theta cos theta is, um, is equivalent to what this symbol means here, this three symbol one, cos squared theta. And I just want to kind of read through some of this that we've got written. First of all, recall that this sort of three lines equal sign actually means equivalent to. What it means is that the left-hand side, LHS, the left-hand side is always equal to the right-hand side, RHS, for all values of theta. So it's, it's a bit more than an equation. It's saying that this and this are always equal to each other. Usually, not always, usually the best method is to manipulate one side, perhaps the left-hand side, into making it look like the right-hand side. And I would give a further tip on top of this. I would manipulate the messier side by tidying it up to look like the other side. Now, in order to answer these questions, we can really only use this thing that we have over here, this thing that we have over here, and our skills with fractions. These are the three things you're going to need to be able to do these kind of proof. Now, this tip is not something that you should always follow, but the tip says turn any tans that you have into sines and coses. It doesn't always work, but it's usually a good starting point. And I've said here to manipulate the messier side. Now, when you look at this one that I've got here, clearly the left hand side is the messier side that we have. And we just pay, pay special attention to the way that I write this out. So I start off by saying that 1 minus tan theta sine theta cos theta is equal to it doesn't matter which symbol you use you can use the equal symbol i am not going to write here cos squared theta and start working on both sides at the same time instead i am just going to work on this left hand side that i've got here and i'm going to keep working on it until eventually i hope that i'll end up with something that says equals cos squared theta so that what you can then see is that this thing is equal to this thing OK, let's go. So first tip, we're going to change the tan theta into a sine theta over cos theta that we know from up here. So that's 1 minus sine theta over cos theta multiplied by sine theta multiplied by cos theta. Now, I mentioned this. You need good skills with fractions. You should clearly be able to see here you are multiplying by cos theta and dividing by cos theta. So they cancel each other out. And this leaves us with 1 minus sine theta multiplied by sine theta. And sine theta multiplied by sine theta is 1 minus sine squared theta. Now I asked you to memorize this one. 1 minus sine squared theta is here, and it is exactly the same as cos squared theta. You don't need to do any rearranging. The examiners will just presume that you know this. 1 minus sine squared theta is the same as cos squared theta. So it's done. I have said that 1 minus tan theta sine theta cos theta is equal to cos squared theta. And notice how I've just gone down here and I've left this side completely blank because that's the only thing I was working on. OK, let's get rid of that word blank. OK, let's try another one. This time I am going to prove that tan theta plus 1 over tan theta is always equal to 1 over sine theta cos theta. Now here's the second tip. If there's any additional subtraction involving at least one fraction with trig functions, like we've got here, always combine them algebraically into 1. Now the reason that we do that, it is much, much, much easier when you have got two things here. It's much easier to add them together than it is to take this one and to try and split it apart. Like I said before, this 
is the messier side. I would say that this is the kind of messier looking side. I look like it looks easy. If I want to tidy that up, all I'm going to do is just add them together. So I start off by saying that tan theta plus one over tan theta. Okay, we're going to use tip number one as well. We're going to change tan theta. In the future, you wouldn't need to change it because we're going to learn new things. But for now, we're going to change tan theta into sine theta over cos theta. Now, one over tan theta, this is the reciprocal of tan theta. And the reciprocal of tan theta must just be cos theta over sine theta. Notice how we've just flipped them to get the reciprocal. The longer way would be doing one over sine theta over cos theta, and then multiplying this by cos theta and this by cos theta to get rid of the fraction within the fraction. But instead, we just know it's the reciprocal of tan theta. So I'm going to replace this, if I use the correct tool, I'm going to replace this with cos theta over sine theta. Okay, here's my tip again. I've got, I'm going to actually add these together. I'm going to add these two fractions. Now they don't have a common denominator, so I need to make a common denominator of sine theta cos theta, and then you're going to have to multiply those and multiply by those as well. So if I change this one, I would have sine theta multiplied by sine theta all over sine theta cos theta. So what I've done here is I've multiplied this fraction, the top and bottom, by sine theta and sine theta. I'm going to do the same with the next one, apart from I'm going to multiply the top and the bottom by cos theta to get the common denominator. So I get cos theta, cos theta over sine theta, cos theta. Notice how I have multiplied the top by cos theta and the bottom by cos theta. Now they have a common denominator, I can just write them as one fraction. So it's sine theta, cos theta. And on the top, I have sine squared theta plus cos squared theta. Now, sine squared plus cos squared theta, you should have memorized this, is 1. So you get 1 over sine theta cos theta, which is the thing that we were trying to prove. Okay, so we have shown that the left-hand side is equal to the right-hand side over here. Okay, let's have a look at this one. I'm just going to box that off so it doesn't get in the way. This one says simplify 5 minus 5 sine squared 3 theta. Okay, that's interesting. It doesn't say theta anymore. It says 3 theta. But these things we've got up here, as long as you change these so that they're all the same, it doesn't matter. I could put 5x inside here, 12x. I could put theta plus 2, whatever you want to put in there, as long as they're the same, those identities work. Now this, I'm going to start off with by simplifying it. You should look at this and think to yourself, oh, you know what I could do here? I could factorise this. So I'm going to say it's 5, 1 minus sine squared 3 theta. And now we can use tip number 3. Tip number 3, look out for 1 minus sine squared theta and 1 minus cos squared theta because you know that 1 minus sine squared theta is cos squared theta, and 1 minus cos squared theta is sine squared theta. If you're not sure where that comes from, that comes from over here. Now that I've got it look like this, I can see that 1 minus sine squared 3 theta must be cos squared 3 theta. Notice how it has to be 3 theta and not just theta. It's still got to match. So it simplifies to 5 cos squared 3 theta. That's that one simplified. OK, we're going to do um, one, two more that we've got here. Oh, gosh, three more. I might actually take a little break at this point, and we'll do this one as a separate set of proofs, OK?